G'day viewers, welcome to another super cool repair video from the Goat Shed, located in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia, all the way down under, the land of kangaroos and Vegemite and meat pies and goats. Okay, high hand. Well, you've all been aware we've been working on a high hand, we've done a few repair videos on it. Well, the job's pretty much complete, all but a few little cosmetic things. So, we felt it prudent, as it's July this month, of course, and guess what? High hand rolled off the assembly line in July 73. So it's its 50th anniversary. Now, an ball game was also made called Captain Card, but as a lot of viewers know, we never ever saw ball games in Australia. The only ones we see here were those that were imported into a country in later years. So happy anniversary to High Hand. It was designed by Ed Krinsky, a prolific Gottlieb designer for many, many years, and the art on it was done by Gordon Morrison. Now, today, it's Monday, July 24th, 2023. It's 12 degrees Celsius outside, which equates to approximately 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit. A little later on, we're going to show you a bizarre problem we had on this. And uh, it, these problems, it, it's... A problem what we say is look where it's not supposed to be and well it will do a little bit of an explanation on that shortly but your high hand game has 4x4 four four drop target arrangements so 16 drop targets and they don't actually reset till the game is over so typical wedge head you, you've got your specials once you get them if you got them first ball you've got them all game and, and that was one of the great appealing things about a wedge head game to get replays or free games. Now your specials, once you get them, they alternate off the pop bumper, and this machine only has one pop bumper, from the hole in the middle to the left and right outlines, which both come on together. So this particular game is the one that's had a brand new cabinet, a new back glass, the owner made a playfield overlay for it and it's had several new parts including a flipper kit and two new coils now this has had those yellow dot coils fitted to it at the request of the owner my opinion they're a little too powerful but that's what they wanted it's had a pop bumper kit a chime kit brand new drop targets of course 46 lamp sockets all brand new a new door and a lot of LEDs in it now once again that's at the request of the owner the LEDs there are two things waiting to arrive which are simply as I mentioned earlier cosmetic we have a set of plastics or light shields on there at the moment which are second hand but we're also waiting on those to come over from the states and I believe the owner's got some score reel decals or new score reels I'm not sure what they are but I, possibly decals to come over now this machine we've had a lot of um, troubleshooting to do on it. Well, not a lot, but we've, we've had troubleshooting to do. And you'll recall our previous video, the one before this one, we illustrated how the interlock relay, which is the V for Victor relay on that game, develops residual magnetism and they don't reliably work and how to go about fixing that. So go back and have a look at that video if you haven't done so already, please. You'll find it very informative. 
in a moment we'll turn the machine on and show you it all lit up it does have a new set of legs there just got our legs we use in the goat shed here with the wheels on it graham's around the back now fitting a channel for the back door so that metal channel that goes along the bottom there wasn't one on this so what we've done we've made one up and probably i'll be able to show you that soon because he's just been on the grinder over there working away at it and fitting it on so apart from that v relay which gave us a, a lot of drama most things were fairly seamless there were just some of the drop target switches were a little bit out of adjustment oh and we had one drop target switch which wouldn't score period even though it was adjusted correctly and, and guess what this is the thing we mentioned a lot it had a, a loose and spinning contact pad on it so we repaired that by soldering the back of it and now it works reliably uh, I think that was the uh, the ace on um, the bottom left card suite, whatever that is. So we had that problem. So there it is with the back box all lit up. We also had to um, do the ground out the lamp sockets on the score reels and from a distance looking at those score reels they don't look too bad but when you get up close to them they aren't really nice they're very dirty we cleaned them as best we could but you, you had to be really careful it was going to start taking paint off them so we didn't want to do that so I'll just start the game up now and let you see the, the play field and everything a light There you go, it served the ball into the shooter lane so we're, we're ready to go. And like I was saying earlier on with that faulty V relay till we modified it, it just wouldn't reset the score reels no matter what you did, it just, they just wouldn't reset. And it hasn't missed a beat since we've done that and we must have started it up, I don't know, 20 or 30 times. So that's a good sign. Oh, that was the other new part, it had, it had a new shooter rod assembly fitted as well. So, we'll go over and we'll have a closer look at the play field now. And you can just see how nice it looks. And I don't think there's any argument about that. And then we'll explain a few other things about the game. So there we are. We're getting up close and personal with it now. You can see the flashing LEDs there working away there in the back box. Not sure what they look like on video. Maybe they come up funny. I hope anyone hasn't got epilepsy. Let's have a look at the play field. There it is. Now there's no glass on this machine at the moment. Let's just have a look at this. These, these uh, labels were made for it. High hand telling you a bit about it when it was made. 49.50 made. 73 there's the instruction card uh, they come from a guy in the UK I, I, I don't know his name but apparently he sells them on on eBay so if anyone's interested type high hand and eBay I guess and up it'll up it'll pop now the drop targets all look obviously very nice because they're brand new new flipper bats, you know, I didn't mention every new part we've put in, but we've, we've put a considerable amount of parts in it. And it's playing quite well. Oh, uh, um, I'll just fire a ball up. Graham standing at the side. Oh, look at that, he saved it. Still got it. So, so it's quite, quite, quite good. Now, one of the problems that we had with it that was really, really frustrating us was that 
when you scored a thousand points and or ten points both score rules would operate now how bizarre is that so you had the ten point and the thousand point now when you think really hard about that the relationship between the ten point and the thousand point don't really exist in other words there is none the schematic indicates that quite clearly along with logic now on this game there are four relays under the play field B, C, D and E they're the sequence completed relays for the card suites so they're the card suite relays and they have a lot of make break switches on and we did find one make break switch on there which was sort of still touching as it broke in other words the other side was too close and when, when it broke it, and to make with the other switch they were the other one was still touching we thought oh and we, we adjusted that and we put it down and it, it seemed to work better and we were quite perplexed by that because it didn't seem to have anything to do with it and away it went and then we were playing it again on uh, Saturday just gone today's Monday and it started to do it very consistently again we thought oh gee you know there's something really wrong here there's a short circuit somewhere where is it so we've looked at every wire loom touching a metal frame touching ground to see if there's any bare wires under there this this can happen uh, I mean I had that on my magnetron once it was pretty cool every time you hit a pop bumper or something you've got a replay but um, you soon got up to 15 quickly believe me but this was doing that as well now as I said we were quite perplexed by this we knew there was a short somewhere and, and we've got to find it now we've always had a saying here in the goat shed if it's not where it's supposed to be look somewhere else now logically that doesn't make a lot of sense does it but meaning okay we've got to go and look at what the problem is we knew it was coming from the play field because when the play field wasn't in it worked fine let me show you what we found there it is it was a seahorse in the machine it looks like a seahorse anyway that big blob of solder so that big blob of solder was wedged was well it had found its way into a jones plug and all you could see sticking out a part of the plug and i'll show you where it was in a moment was just this little end bit here just sort of it just looked like a pinhead it, it was quite bizarre and i thought i oh, will just pull that away and it, it was that long so that's about how long is that that uh, probably three quarter of an inch long mm. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah not, not like an yeah. yeah, it would be. So that was shorting out within the Jones plug, and once we pulled that out on Saturday morning, just before we finished up, it worked fine, and we've been testing it feverishly again. I tried to emulate the problem with, by shorting out a couple of lugs, but it wouldn't work. But where it was, it directly affected the 10 and the 1000, the wires coming in. So. Yeah, we're, we're quietly confident 100% that that was the problem. So we've caused that somehow. Um, God knows how, but you know they're the things you've got to look for. So, yeah, you know, that was just quite bizarre. Um, now I think we're just going to set up the scores on this um, game. So I don't know if anyone out there has ever set scores, but let's just show you how to do that. I'll go around the back, and Graham's probably in the middle of doing some things around there, just finishing off. So let's just take a quick look at that. Okay, so just where we're pointing to is where that bit of solder was sticking out and like I said because it was so long it was just touching the other That's side right. the gap in there and the other side well at the front it looked like it was only on the on the actual onion on that, that, that one um, plug yeah so till we pulled it out we didn't realize now like I said that's just bizarre I mean yeah. it, it must have just fell down in there a bit of hot solder mm. and it's just melted and flattened itself out enough to to do the damage yep. all right 
Okay, everyone's probably seen one of these in the back of a game. They vary where they are, but this is called the point score adjustment plug. Now, Graham will explain to you how this works. Okay. Now, when you look at the plug, people, some people are confused about what size what. When you see that bit at the end sticking out, that is that black, Just, that black mark there. Okay, okay so the bit, the, that's the bit on the right, yeah, sorry. On the right side, yeah, that's that, that's that bit there. So don't get confused what side you're starting on. Okay, so the score we want is 75,000. Okay, so you look down here, there's your plug, 70. And that, that is um, to a 7, I think a 7 is over there. So you see 7, that is that plug there, right? So you want 5. So you go to the female side, and you look where 5 is. It's 5,000, so 7, 75, that's 75,000. Pretty basic, but you put that in there, and that'll be your 75,000, which is on the card. Next one, 93. Look for a 9. Uh, oh, there's one there. It's 9. Okay. 93. There's 3 on the, on the chart. So there, that's it there. That's the plug there. So you put in your 9 into the 3. And that should be ready to go. Very easy. There. Now, the, probably the thing that we may not have made clear is that um, you read there the plugs are the thousands, so you've got 10, 20, 30, 40 to 80. So plug 7, which was 70,000, the first plug, he put that in to the 5, so the bottom left. It is there. That says 5. Yeah, so there, there's that plug there in the, in the 5. The other one he put into the, which was 93, so he's put it into the 3, which is the second from the right. And as you can see, that's where it is. So that's how you achieve it. And um, another thing people don't know about other scores, so just say you want 50,000, but you think, oh, 50,000, well, there's no zero. So what you do is that you get plug 4, and there's a 10,000, so 10 and 4, the 40, is going to be 50. So that plug there on the 4 will be 50,000 if you're scoring 50,000. Same, same as any other one if you... Yeah, any, any, any one that's got zeros on the end. So just say 80,000, 90,000, 100,000, whatever suits. So, so there you go. Um, if you didn't know that, that's, that's what, how, how you do it. I think we've showed people this before as well, but we always put new braid on the um, on on the step units on the yeah. snowshoes because it's got to be flexible. They they can't be sticky. And I think when you change them, you see a lot of them that are just barely touching. So it was a good idea to change them anyway. Okay, so like I said, um, here oh here's what we we did fabricating the just made a little. There's a channel there, so the door will sit on that. So it's basically just to hold the door on. Like when you're at home, you're not going to have anyone breaking into the back door, so you don't need nothing fancy. There, there's the other one. So God knows where and, the channel was. And the, screw, the screws are countersunk so that it's flat with the with the channel. That's right. So because if you have the the head of the screw sticking up too high, the actual top of the door will hit the hit the wood. So you need the door low. Yeah, um, that's important. So just almost close to ending this video, there's the new rubber cabinet that was made. So all that was was commercially available uh, shelving affixed to some wood with a an awning over it. And there's actually LED light under there, which we've got to hook up because that was over here to the right where that cupboard is now. So that's our new spare parts cupboard, so we've got to get new, sh more plastic shelving. We'll possibly do that this week. I'm not sure we've got a lot of work to do over the coming weeks, just keeping us busy. So there's Spanky up there. It looks like, yeah, are you doing stock takes, Spanky, are you? Yes, yes he is. So just a reminder again, for those of you that may not have, please subscribe to our channel. That gives us the encouragement to keep making these videos for you. And give us the thumbs up so we can get instead with um, with YouTube. 
So, this has been another Go Shared presentation.